Hello friends, welcome back to Safe at Homestead. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy you stopped by. So today I have a couple of projects going on, maybe three. Um, I started the morning by heading out to meet some friends who kindly offered the use of their uh, long bed trailer to pick up some cattle panels. I have been putting off the cattle panel project because I mean, I knew it was inevitable. I want to do it, but it was so expensive. And just from shopping around, I found a local um, building supply company and I got cattle panels for $11 cheaper than anywhere else in town. So it, it pays to shop around and it pays to wait a little bit. Okay, so we got our cattle panels. They brought it home. Um, I also got some tea posts much cheaper than anywhere else. This is my favorite place now. Um, and then I went back out. I went to the library to drop off an overdue book. I stopped by um, the car wash. got the car washed and vacuumed. And then I went to Lowe's because I needed to get um, some fertilizer. I'm planting more potatoes, you guys. I'm finding places to plant potatoes. A friend gave me some large containers. I'm really grateful for that. I don't know. It's just potatoes are just uh, jumping in front of me every time I go to the store so and I can't help it I have to buy them so I have to plant some potatoes and needed some fertilizer so I picked that up and then I picked up some spray paint and I will show you what I'm doing with the spray paint right now I am going to make myself some breakfast and I am going to make some ghee and I thought I would share with you guys how I make my ghee and why I make ghee all right so let's jump into that so before I get my breakfast started, I'm going to show you um, the butter that I'm using. I'm using Challenge Butter. You can use any butter, really, to make ghee. I have several of these that uh, were given to me. Um, they're both salted, and I'm going to use both of them today. So basically, when you're making ghee, all you are doing is putting your butter in a heavy bottom pan. You need a heavy bottom pan because you don't want it to um, burn or scorch, right? Or butter. Let's get you closer if I can. So we're just putting um, our butter into this heavy bottom pan. And you're going to put your butter on the lowest setting that your stove has. For me, it's low. Uh, and so I'm going to put it on that setting. And I'm only going to do four sticks at a time I don't like to do I guess it's it's just in case I ruin it for some reason I've never ruined it before but that way it's not a whole um, two pounds of butter that I ruined right so I just do one at a time um, you're gonna turn your stove to low and you're gonna let it start melting really really slowly and uh, then I will show you the next step there's really nothing much to making ghee, so it's it's pretty easy. All right, so I'm gonna make my breakfast and then I'm gonna come back and show you how the ghee is looking. Just want to show you what's happening so far. All the sticks of butter have melted, and you can see that now some bubbling is starting to happen. And what that's gonna end up being like is just a bunch of foam on the surface. So what you're trying to achieve when you're making ghee is you want, you're going to have like three levels. You're going to have the foam at the top, the clarified butter in the middle, and all the milk solids on the bottom. So that's what we are, uh, that's our goal here. And the foam is just barely starting with this bubbling. So I'll bring you guys back so you can see what that's going to look like. Okay, so we're back, and I wanted to show you what it's looking like. You see it's starting to bubble more, and the white foam is starting to form. Uh, we are separating the moisture, the water, uh, from the butter, and that's going to be just all that foam at the top. And then in the middle, you will see the clarified ghee. And then at the bottom, you're going to see the milk solids. So this, this foam is going to cover the entire top portion here in a little bit. Uh, you just have to be patient. 
and let it do let it do its thing you're not stirring you're not doing anything at all um, just watching I have this cover on here I'm not covering it I just have it like this because I I don't have a splatter guard so I'm trying to keep butter from splattering on me on my clothing or burning me and cutting down on how much of it gets on my stove so that's why I have this but if you have a splatter guard that's the ideal thing to use all right so while this um, keeps working at becoming ghee let's take a look at um, uh, just catch up a little bit on what's been going on outside um, you're gonna see me working with the greenhouse that was interesting and then you get a look at the girls the little girls and see what they're up to they've gotten so big you guys take a look you guys ever put any IKEA furniture together you know that can be challenging right I think this is worse because there's absolutely no instructions fortunately it's a small little greenhouse and it does tell me how many uh, pieces of each type I'm supposed to have but that's all it tells me um, I do know where the parts go so that's helpful um, because they are numbered here as well so let's just get started all right you guys I wish I had a GoPro on my head just now all the chickens got out oh, except for the young ones and it was hysterical. My husband is on his way to a meeting. He had a suit on and he was running around in the yard trying to catch chickens. And I was, oh my gosh, it was so funny. I mean, funny, not funny. But anyways, I wish you could have seen it. So this is what I wanted to accomplish today. I wanted to figure out the area. Like, because I'm going to be putting down um, a landscape fabric and I wanted to, to keep weeds from coming up and I wanted to know what area um, I needed to put the fabric down and how much you know how wide is it really I don't really remember <laughs> the dimensions um, I know that it wasn't very deep but there you have it uh, I've done this much without instructions and I I I don't think you need instructions I think just looking at the diagram and they numbered everything so you should be able to tell as you can see here whatever the wind is picking up we are expecting some high wind gusts so this is not a project that i'm going to finish today um i just wanted to know this like i said and you guys are going to see uh, how we plan on holding it down so it doesn't blow away because there's no weight at all to this greenhouse okay uh, we'll get back with you as i make some more progress all right, it is two days later, and I am just following the diagram. Like I said before, there's no instructions, but the, the diagrams are pretty helpful. And it's really all you need, so... Just taking a break from putting the greenhouse together. I wanted to come in here and show you guys these little girls. This is day three of them being out and about. They are congregating here in the clubhouse. Mostly, they stay back here. Obviously, the big girls are back here right now. That black tail you see there is Pepper. I don't know why she's back there. And they are eating the baby's food and I don't know why. Um, novelty maybe so they've chased the little girls away but they're not doing too bad they are doing pretty good actually um, they are having more trouble with themselves and being out here they're so skittish but the big girls aren't really bothering them that much this is funny the big girls spend a lot of time inside the brooder no idea why but they do there goes Luna there hasn't been much pecking or <clears throat> fighting 
really, so I'm pretty pleased with how it's going. I think I'm going to put them in the coop tonight, like after the big girls go in and settle in their spots. I think, yes, can I help you? I think I will bring the babies in and set them on the roosts. See what happens. All right, so I've gotten to a spot where I think some guesswork is involved because it's not giving you details as to which piece goes next. I am basically right here at the top. The roof is going to go into these, but I'm not sure what piece goes here to put the support bar across the back. Alright, I'm going to try to use some common sense here. Okay, I'm over here in the sand so I can show you the shelves. Uh, you see it has a little lip that goes up. Well, they are supposed to go on this way with the lip down and it's supposed to, um, I guess, grab onto the sides of the shelf, the poles, but it doesn't work. It, 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 it just doesn't work and it doesn't work this way either. Neither way is very secure, so. But I like the idea of having it this way with the lip facing up because that'll offer a little bit more security to anything that's on the shelf. So what I am doing is just laying it on the little pipes with the lip up and zip tying it on there. I hope that makes sense. Um, You'll get to see it when it's all done. All right, it is done. I will say that there might be some trial and error with this when you're doing it. It's not anything that's a big deal, but um, my first error was putting a two foot piece at the bottom here across this way instead of a three foot piece. so. It wasn't um, working <laughs> to put the roofing part on or those trusses at the top and I couldn't figure it out and then I finally took a look at it and it looked a little lopsided and it's because I had the wrong size piece right up here. So I had to take the one from down there, put it up there and then everything was fine. Um, yeah, it's not hard at all. It's just maybe just a tad tedious because there's no instructions but you guys can do it. I am going to stop here. Oh, the shelves are zip tied on, by the way. I'm going to stop here because I don't want to... There are the shelves. I only put four of the six. I'm not sure if I'm going to put the ones at the bottom on or not. And I'm going to stop here now because I don't want to put the cover on it until we have the... Um, straps on to support it. I think they do give you something, but what they give you is nothing. It, it will not um, keep this on the ground in any kind of wind uh, anywhere, I don't think. And for us, even less so. So once we get the straps on, uh, the augers in and the straps on, and it's secure, then I'll bring you back to, well, I might show you how we do that too, but then I will put the cover on. So bold. Okay, so I wanted to bring you in close so you could see this foam forming, but also so you could see in between, just so you could see the three layers. So you see the foam here, and if I move it away, you can see the clarified butter, but you can see through it. Let's do it over here. You can see through it and you can see the milk solids at the bottom. I hope you can see that. 
there's foam, there's clarified butter, and then there's milk solids at the bottom of the pan. Okay, so we are just going to let this keep bubbling away until the um, foam starts to dissipate. Right now there's a lot of, whoa, <laughs> let's cover that. Right now there's a lot of foam, but the foam will dissipate and there'll be less and less foam. You're not gonna skim it off or anything like that. You're just gonna let it do its thing. Ghee basically makes itself. You just need to keep an eye on it. So you can see here how the foam is minimal. I wanted you to see you see, you can see the foam, you can see the clarified butter, and if you look through the clarified butter, you can see the milk solids. So this is almost done. I'm going to give it a little bit longer to see if I can get more of the um, foam to dissipate, and then we'll jar it up. I'm going to call this done. I'm going to turn off my burner and I'm going to let this sit here for a bit. And then we're going to strain it into our jar and then I will show you um, a jar of ghee that I made six months ago, I think. Six months or so ago and just chat for a second about why I even bother making ghee. Alrighty, let's strain our ghee into our jar. I strain it because there's just little bits of that foam left. Not only that, just in case some of the milk solids get dislodged from the bottom. That's what it looks like. I don't want that to get into my jar. So here's my jar of ghee. Isn't that beautiful? So I will just leave this here with a cover loosely on the top. And it's going to end up looking like this. This ghee I made, I was looking back on my Instagram to see when I posted it. It said 25 weeks ago, so five, six months ago. I have four jars right now of ghee, five with this one, and when I make this one, I'll have six. So the reason I make ghee is because it's a way of um, preserving butter. Uh, you could put it in the freezer. I have several of these in the freezer. They were gifted to me. And I have several of them in the freezer uh, in the, my shed. And um, that's a good way to do it if you um, will just have a bunch of butter and you can't fit it all in your fridge. But if something happened to your freezer, if the power went out or something like that, you could potentially lose your butter, right? Um, and so I will always have butter in my freezer, but I also want to have ghee because this is shelf stable And if the power goes out, it's not going to affect this Also, uh, the other reason that I like ghee is because it has a high smoke point So it's uh, I can't fry things without the butter burning, but I can fry things in ghee without the ghee burning I have not used it to bake. A lot of people have used it to bake. It has its own different flavors, kind of a kind of a nutty flavor. It's not so much sweet. It's more, I would call it savory. Nutty is is how I, um, yeah, I think it's a nutty flavor. And um, so it, it will make your cookies taste a little bit different or your cakes taste a little bit different but i like having it on hand and 
if there's ever, well, there is a shortage of different oils right now. Um, having the ghee on hand means that I can still fry things. I don't like deep fry th a lot of things, but if I wanted to have an oil for stir frying uh, vegetables or anything like that, I have my ghee on hand and it will work for that. So as a way of preserving butter just um, because there's no room in the freezer, because of just being ahead of the game if your power goes out for an extended period of time, uh, if you uh, can't get your hands on olive oil or uh, whatever oils you use, all of those reasons are uh, reasons why I like to have ghee on hand. Now, lastly, I want to talk about this um, milk solids. I'm not going to save this um, batch of milk solids, but I have saved it in the past. And I keep it in my freezer, and this is, uh, I don't know, probably two or three or four <laughs> uh, batches of ghee. You can't really tell much from just looking at it like that. But looking at it from the side, you can see, uh, get a better idea of what it looks like. Oh, I could just show you this again. So this is what it looks like. And I, I just felt like I should save this when I first started making ghee. I didn't know what I was going to do with it, but I was like, oh man, this is, it's kind of, it's salty. It's pretty salty because all the salts are in there. If you make your um, ghee with unsalted butter, obviously your milk salads won't be salty. But um, I felt like there's something I could do with it and I just asked, uh, I think I asked them on Instagram or maybe I asked friends, I don't recall, but somebody said use it when you make beans. And I thought that was a great idea. So I saved it. You're just going to, you know, taste and use a little at a time because you don't want to use too much. It's very salty. So you would get your salt and a little fat from uh, the milk solids in your beans. And then I put it in my freezer and promptly forgot. So now that I'm making ghee again, I um, remembered this and I went and took it out. So I'm going to try to remember this for when I am making beans. Or, I mean, even green beans, right? You could use use it for making green beans. I'm sure there are many uh, ways that you could use this instead of um, uh, tossing it so that you actually use every part of the, the butter. Okay, so that is it. So I'm going to take you outside and show you what I'm doing with the spray paint. And we'll see if... Um, yeah, I have another big project that I'm doing today, and I, I don't know exactly what time that's going to start, so I don't know if there's going to be enough light to show you as I am doing it, but we'll see. All right, so this is what the finished product of your ghee will look like, and I think that um, you would appreciate having it if push came to shove, if, you know, you just have no butter or your butter melted or got went bad or whatever the case may be to just be able to grab this from your shelf and use it just like you would um, any butter but also like you would any oil that has a high smoke point all right let's go outside and play with spray with uh, spray paint did i ever show you guys the greenhouse i don't think i officially showed it to you i did show you the frame after i got it up uh, I did have some trouble with getting the plastic on because uh, I didn't push in all the parts far enough that made that made it hard to put on the shelves but now the shelves are on the way they should be and uh, the plastic never fit perfectly uh, and it's a little bit hard to, to zip but uh, it's it's not too bad and it didn't matter what I did. My husband pushed as hard as he could to get these in. We even used a mallet to make sure everything was pushed in. But stuff like this is happening. Like this is not perfect. I mean, this should be like this. But no matter what we do, it, it, it won't sit perfectly. But it's okay. It's not horrible. Here's the same thing. I haven't really used it yet for much. Um, oh, the other thing that 
that's not happening regardless of how much we try to adjust is in the videos etc people get a lot of uh, excess to come out here like this side is much better see but it's not like other people's at, that I have seen I put some brick, bricks on there to keep it down this one has barely any this side has barely any but you know it's not bad it's for our purposes um, I'm using it I mean it gets super hot here and uh, that's the reason you can leave this door open <laughs> because it's just so hot and you want it open you don't want to burn your plants in there cook your plants in there so spaces like that like on the left side and the right side it's definitely just just at the bottom it's not laying down and out and that's fine I put this piece of wood here I stapled it to the door that way when I open the door I can roll it so because when I was rolling it just the plastic it was coming out too big I could barely tie it with the ties that are here designed for um, holding it up so after I get it all tied I just bring it up here and tie it with this tie that's designed for that uh, and that's the way you can leave the greenhouse open Right now, all I have in there is a sprig of um, eucalyptus and a container, a five gallon bucket with a potting mix and, oh, oh, a box of potatoes. I almost forgot about that. Let me grab it. I need to find a place to plant this. And I promise this is my last potato that I am buying. I keep buying potatoes. I won't buy any more potatoes. These are some more of the banana potatoes. Okay, so I'm just going to close this back up. Actually, I think now that it's hot and the plastic's a little softer, it's easier to close, open and close the, the door. So there is the greenhouse, and I am thinking about different ways to use it. I never showed you guys what I did with the spray paint and what I did was uh, spray paint these T-posts. I did this because, well T-posts are just drab, but really the reason I did it is because I'm trying to add some decorative touches to my garden, not just, you know, the plants, but just decorate it a little bit and I thought having colorful tea posts would be one way to do that um, my father-in-law bought some bought me some metal chickens I think you stick them in the ground or something so I will find a place to put those but yeah in general I just want to um, yeah decorate the garden as if it was uh, a room a room in my house so besides that, what I'm going to do right now is, um, oh, too much shadow. What I'm going to do right now is plant some of these flowers. They were marked down at my local store. They probably need some water. I'm going to plant these right here. Oops, this needs some water. Yeah, I'm going to hurry and plant these and call it a day. I think I'm just going to take a nap i feel like i need one <laughs> all right you guys we'll see you next time go do something small so right now we are working on getting our trellises up these are the 16 foot cattle panels we recently bought and this year instead of four t-posts two on each side i'm trying one and here's the second one and now we're doing this, the whole length of this bed, which is almost eight feet, not quite. So we're going to be overlapping cattle panel right here. So far, so good. It's 
not the easiest thing but ooh, look at the sunset so with this trellis it's gonna go across the entire bed it is almost eight feet long just a couple of inches short of so we're gonna be doubling or overlapping the cattle panel and then we have that one here that's the last one that we're going to do just wanted to give you a view of the sunset okay so this is the last trellis we're putting up the last arch the Mister is going to bring that cattle panel.